I always wanted to get into art school, but um, I just didn't lead that way. I got into business school. Uh, my mom worked in finance and she kind of pushed me to get into a business school. But while I was in school for business, um, I was able to minor in art history, learning about Robert Frank, you know, learning about um, the early photography books, uh, learning about Winogrand and um, sort of feeling like you could like live vicariously through these uh, these photographers uh, in New York. I still have a really good friend. His name is uh, Danny Weiss. Um, and uh, he, I just looked up to him as a photographer. And so he inspired me to get a Leica and follow him around. And, you know, just spend days in Midtown walking up and down the streets to photographing people without them trying to notice. I moved to LA in 2015. Uh, I had been living in New York for 28 years. I had just seen the book uh, Zizix by Gregory Halpern and I was just like, uh, I knew, I know other photographers were at the time too, just like blown away by that book and wanting to make medium format color work. And so um, I started going out and photographing in a similar way. I think um, to me, it's funny because you don't, as a photographer, you're sort of always, and especially when you're starting out, you're sort of always, you know, just like a guitarist, you're playing other people's songs, you know, to learn how to play guitar. And so you kind of have to play other people's photo books. And I was, I found a place along the Salton Sea called Bombay Beach. It, it forced me out of making photographs of people where they didn't know like the backs of their heads or you know kind of like candids to approaching people knocking on their doors of their shacks um spending some time with them telling them what i'm doing and photographing them directly so i made a, a mock-up of the book i was super excited and i showed it <laughs> i showed it to a couple people and uh, instantly was like, this looks like Zizix. And I was heartbroken. When I heard that, I said, you know, there's no way I'm gonna get this book published. Um, even though I thought the work was really good, there's just no publisher out here in LA that's willing to do it. Um, and so I sort of pushed it aside and uh, went through sort of a year of just and feeling kind of shitty about photography because it does it didn't my dream didn't really come true like I, I'd worked so hard on this project and I had put my all into it and you know you just get that response that it looks like someone else's work and it sucks you know so um I kind of killed photography for a little while uh worked a lot and then um slowly started getting back uh you know i got back to la after that and i was like what's next so i started photographing out in uh, the parks griffith park and then echo park which is elysian park um and i've been photographing in black and white again with this mia 7 um and i was photographing these trees these trees are covered in graffiti and i was so interested in these trees so i showed uh a friend of mine photos and um he's like you know these are good but i think they would be better if you shot them in large format that was really the start of angel's point is before even that project started it was that parts of that park was an area for me to test out how to even focus and how to you know how to set the exposures and how to even compose and um, it just felt like I was starting over all again. You know, I had given up on photography. And so I had just been photographing and not interacting with people. Um, I just wanted to learn how to put the camera down, set it up, uh, you know, make a photograph of something and, and, and do it quickly or quicker than I could do in the beginning so that when I was going to start approaching people it wouldn't feel so clunky um, and so 
I was starting to uh, make photographs of people looking out uh, from the park, um, you know, on the skyline. Um, and so all those, most of those photographs were done without people really knowing. Um, but, you know, again, you look at, you start looking at your pitfalls and work and you start saying, well, I don't think this is going to be enough uh, to really focus on just landscapes and in the backs of people again. I need to get people. I need to get people. I need to get a portrait. I need to try to get portraits. So the, the angel story comes out of, you know, that first week or so of starting to approach people and ask them if they can take their photograph. Um, and he was just wandering around on the top of a hill nearby a tree. Um, he, he just looks so different than anyone I had seen up there so far. And so I just had, I said, fuck it, let me go and ask him if I could take his photograph. And so I did. Um, and then we said our goodbyes. It was going to be sunset anyway. And as I was walking down that hill, I noticed that that area of the park was named Angel's Point. So I had just photographed this guy named Angel and uh, he sort of vanishes. And it's kind of the first portrait I've made in the in, in the in the park. And then I, I realized that that area of the park is called Angel's Point. So I knew that I was maybe on a right path there to focusing all my energy on this place. That's kind of how it all started. And then uh, I said I would meet him again next week at the same place. And of course, he shows up. And, and that's when um, I took that that portrait of him, uh, that close up portrait that is in the beginning of the book. You know, the first time I heard about Robert Adams was also a while back. I was watching uh, these PBS documentaries called Art 21, the way he sort of detested uh, the the landscape that was coming out in in Colorado, um, but also photographing it in such a way that made it so beautiful, like the way he photographed light, the way light was placed on photo paper, and um, just that 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 ability to sort of take a concept and go ahead with it. Um, so. That's kind of my introduction to Robert Adams. When I got back into black and white photography, of course, he was a huge influence. So it was more of the essence of him that kind of lived in you while you're making that, you know, your work. Same with other photographers too, but I think he just seems like such a, a father figure uh, of, of uh, contemporary landscape photography that it's just hard to avoid him. got down to the editing process of the book, we sort of realized that the, the back and forth between portrait to landscape to portrait to landscape felt, you know, didn't feel as genuine as sticking to a more landscape heavy narrative with dabbled portraits in between, in between and then closer to the end, we realized, well, we should just make this all about, you know, Angel's view and maybe not even make it even feel like there's portraiture where other people are looking into the camera directly and sitting down where that's that, that's not even there. And so that that whole experience was kind of like how the book comes out. I sent it off to some friends. Um, one of them was Brian Scootma. And uh, he just like texted back like, hey, like, would, do you want to show this to Bob? And I was like, I don't have his his address or anything like that. Uh, he's like, do you want it? I'd be happy to give it to you. I think he would appreciate to see it. Um, and I was just like, first off, that coming from him, Brian was like huge. I didn't think Brian was going to react that way. And then having this reason to send a book out to, to Robert Adams was also like 
holy crap, you know, could this work? So I, I, I uh, immediately, like the week after, packed up a book, wrote a letter to him. It was a really long letter. <laughs> um, I didn't know what to say. I, I, I should go back and read what I said to him. I tried explaining the project and and how much his his work means to me, and then um, kind of like shipped it off into the ether. Um, and then, you know, forgot about it. And then a couple months later, you know, you have get the, the I don't know if you get this UPS USPS sends you like these little pictures of mail that's going to come in a day or two from now mm-hmm. um and there was one letter it says Astoria and I could see that it was like I think it was stamped Robert Adams or something like that and I was just like I can't believe I'm getting a letter from this dude uh and it showed up and I immediately got in the house and I ripped it open but the letter was beautiful. The letter basically, you know, I forgot word for word for it, but it just like, it reminds me of places I've walked through. That was a line he said. And uh, he really loved the portrait of Angel. He said that the portrait was remarkable. So I, after hearing that, I was like, damn dude, I guess I should make more portraits. Um, but all in all, it was a beautiful letter. Um, you know, his eyesight is going, and uh, I don't know, he seems, you know, he's living his age graciously, and uh, the letter was sort of written that way. Um, so it's hung up in my, in this in this garage office right now. I just, every day I leave the garage, I, I look at it, and I can see it on the way out. So it's like, it's one of those things that, uh, you don't get much of that in your lifetime you know you don't you, you get friends and you get family and you get even people you look up to saying this is great this is cool this is interesting i love this um but you rarely get um that kind of satisfaction uh for doing something that connected with somebody that you kind of look at as the be all end all of what you're trying to do.